Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Not a sequel to Witchboard, huh? Screw it, I'm gonna review it anyway. <laughs> Witch Trap. This is the 1989 supernatural horror film from director Kevin Tenney. The plot. A group of paranormal investigators and a trio of cops head off to this estate and they're trying to contact a spirit. Too bad the spirit is ultra powerful and is picking them off one by one. It's like if Ghostbusters met up with the Evil Dead and just got crazy with each other. The acting is pretty poorly done, but I'll get into that in a bit as to why. There is a reason for it. One I will get into now is that the idea by Kevin Tenney was conceived and written in a week, so not everything was fleshed out and prepared. But Tenney is a professional, so it was in safe hands. Tony Vicente, played by James W. Quinn, who did the demon voices for Night of the Demons 1, 2, and 3, is the main character here. He plays one of the cops. He's a thorough skeptic and probably an atheist, too. He's seeing the horrors of the world and the terror in the streets. The real monster is man. Whitney O'Shea, played by Kathleen Bailey, is the religious one who's also a portal. I think she's a medium, actually, and she has the power to banish him from this house. Or so they think. Agnes Goldberg, played by Judy Tatum, is a bitch. I couldn't stand her. I mean, she could have been done a little bit better. I think she goes back and forth between being a good person and doing it all for the fame and fortune. Felix Goldberg is her husband and personal whipping boy. He's played by Rob Zappel, and I love his dialogue. She asks him, are you going to do anything about the man who just talked to me disrespectfully? And he goes, well, he does have a gun. Oh my god. <laughs> Ginger Kowalski, played by Linnea Quigley. You know, Linnea Quigley from films such as Night of the Demons, Return of the Living Dead, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. You know, that one. She's a video tech in this movie, and... Her purpose is, she's Linnea Quigley. And she didn't even have to come in to read for her lines. Because she worked with Kevin Tenney and the other demons, and she proved herself in that movie, apparently. Avery Lauder, played by J.P. Lubinson. I hate to be that guy in high school. He played the main villain in Witchboard. Uh, he's the main villain here. And I think he's actually pretty threatening in parts whenever he's on screen. So this is a bad, bad movie, but it's so bad, it's entertaining. It does have some pacing issues if you are not invested in the story. You have to be along for the ride and down with the premise to get past some of its shortcomings. One of those shortcomings is not, and I repeat, not the gore, the effects, we have a shower head nozzle getting stuck in someone's throat. Bloody bullet hits, with one just being the bullet flying into someone's head without using a gun. That was a cool effect. A hatchet to the head, which, hatchet to the head, I said before, is a fun, cool cannibal corpse song. An awesome exploded head and a neat melting body. This is probably Tenny's goriest 1980s film, in my opinion. Tassilo Bauer was the special effects supervisor on this film. He did a fantastic job overseeing the gory goodness. He actually came up with the idea for the hands to appear through spandex. He was going to use it in Witchboard after learning how to do it in A Nightmare on Elm Street. The hand was supposed to come through the board, however it didn't work. Well, it did, but it didn't match up continuity-wise. So it was utilized here. I believe it was Judy Yonamento who did the special makeup effects work. And an especially fantastic job with the melting sequence. The effect was made out of layers of wax. So when it's melted, the skin would come off and reveal bone. 
the explosions in the movie are a nice touch and show early signs that more explosions would occur in a lot of Tenney's films. The motion picture soundtrack, Dennis Michael Tenney knocks it out of the park with this one. I love the cheesy music in this movie. Some of it is big and bombastic and brash, while other sequences are quite dreamlike. It's very fitting. Now, before we wrap this up, let's get into some sweet facts with Telltale, Telltale Treats. This whole movie is dubbed over. All the live audio was said to have been recorded, but it wasn't done properly, so nothing came through. So everyone had to come back in and redo their lines. The redone sound effects are not too bad, to be honest. They add everything that's needed to be into the movie. Everything from the rattling gates to the crickets in the night. This movie is also a thank you from Tenny to all the previous cast members he worked with on his other projects. That's nice. So, this is a bad movie, but it is so dang fun. I hated some of the characters, but I think that was done intentionally. The dubbing will throw some people off, for sure. But in the end, I enjoyed the heck out of this flick. With a budget of around $400,000, it really did accomplish a lot. I'd say give this a watch if you want some cheesy goodness that gets in, has some great effects, makes you think for a second in the end, and gets out. Overall, I give... Witch Trap a 2 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, and Liam Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you'll get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. Also, hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video, and as always, subscribe.